Hi, this little screencast is going to show you how to use some of the features of O365 and more importantly, or more specifically, looking at the survey tool that's in Excel. So the first thing you need to do is to log into your O365 account and be in the web version of everything. So I've logged in and this is my, uh, my dashboard that I start up with. It may be different for you, but these are the apps that I have. So what I want to do is I want to click on Excel. So I click on there and it will load up. Once it's loaded up, you'll see that you've got the, the full version of Excel sitting there. If the menu bar isn't there and it's disappeared, all you need to do is click on one of these tabs and the ribbon will come down for you. So it's got all the functionality that you'd normally have in Excel. And what we are looking for is we're looking for making an actual survey here. So a nice little tip is to actually name it first. I'm just going to call it demo. So I've got uh, my sheet named. So now we have a spreadsheet sitting there and what we want to do is to uh, put a survey that will sit on top of this and put data into our spreadsheet for us. So if we go to insert, you'll see that they've got a survey and a table. We want to go to survey. So if we click on survey, it says do you want to do a new survey and we certainly do. So we click on that. And up will come another window that sits inside the front of it. This is the first part that you always see. It asks for a title for your survey and a description. So we'll just enter that now. Now, we've got a series of questions you can add. You can add as many questions as you want. When you click on this little box here, it'll come up with uh, the type of question. So you can ask, ask a whole lot of questions and you can get to the user to respond in a couple of ways. So I'm just going to do a first name because that's a nice thing to start with. Now you can see the options that we can have. We can have a paragraph text. We can have a number response, we can have a date, a time, a yes, no response, or a multiple choice response. I'm just wanting a first name because I want to have a, uh, just get some information. With all the surveys that I run, I run surveys for formative quizzes. Um, I always go first name, last name, and email, because then I can do a mail merge out of the information I've got. But that's up to you to what you do. There's a little tick box here that's a required question, and if you have to give a hint, that's what you do in the question subtitle here is where um, you actually do a hint that actually tells people what they need to do and go done and it sees it, it builds it in for you once again I want to do it again, I want to do last name this time That's all right. put that in, text, I want to make it a required question again and go done I'll do the same for email um, required question and we're done now I now want to ask, ask something that's got a multiple choice question so I'm just going to say, how hot was it today? So I can put, how hot was it in Adelaide in February 25? And my question subtitle is going to be giving them a bit of a hint. I'm going to say, check Bureau of Meteorology. And I'm going to put some choices. So as you can see, it comes up with three choices. So I'm just going to go 25, do an enter or a return, 36. Um, and then 29 and if you put down a default answer here it'll put that answer uh, automatically if someone doesn't fill in the form for you or doesn't fill in this part so I want to go yeah that's okay that's done and you can keep on building um, your quiz as you go you might kind of get to the end and go oh heck I want to change this one if you click on here that little uh, cog button comes up and then you can fix it up there so whichever one clicks on you can do it you can keep on adding 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 if I want to see what it looks like I just want to go and um, have a bit of a squeeze because I want to say, oh, is this exactly what I want it to look like? So we can go save and view and it shows you basically a, a little bit of a demo of what it looks like. And that looks pretty good to me. That's pretty cool. It's got three questions and it's not too bad. You'll notice in the background here, as I've done save and view, it's actually added the columns. So it's automatically setting up the spreadsheet to collect this data when we actually um, get people to fill it out and submit it. So I want to go back to edit the survey and um, I'm going to add a new question and I'm going to go um, just what is your age so I know who's been taking my survey for me and I just want it as a number and go done so that's my questions there so they're all good if I want to now share my survey so I'm pretty happy with it I'm really excited that this is going to work I can now share this survey with anyone and when I go to share it what happens is it gives me uh, a link and this link here will give you, um, you just cut and paste that, put it into an email or a browser, or and it will take you to uh, this site. So that's pretty cool. Now let's just, I'll just fill one out and show you what it looks like. So I'm just going to cut and paste this. 
open a new tab in a browser and this is what it will look like for the people coming to do the, the demo. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do test, um, I'm going to do test, email is test at test.com and I'm going to 36 today and I'm going to say my age is 34. When I come down to submit, I go like that, and it goes, thanks, your response was received, and for all intents and purposes, the person using this has finished. If we now come back to our demo sheet, it's actually grabbed the information and filled it out there. So as you keep on going, it will keep on filling it and filling it, which is pretty cool. And down here, you've got Survey 1 um, as a tab down the bottom. Now, make out you've done this for a bit and you want to actually change something around it. To get to this quiz or the, the front page that you've set up for your survey, if you go to insert and go to survey, it'll let you edit survey, delete survey, share survey, or view the survey. So we want to edit it. Now we can do that. And we can go back in and all the stuff is there that we want to do. If we want to stop people from um, using that survey, we can click on here. You can either delete the survey, or when we come to share the survey, you can actually turn it off. So there's a function in here that says stop sharing the survey. If you hit that, then you won't get any more responses coming in. So that's a really handy way of just getting information. If you wanted to do a formative test or something, you could have a whole lot of multiple choice questions through here, um, and the students would fill it out for you, and you can quickly have a look through here at home to see who's got the questions right or wrong, and then you can use that to um, maybe decide which way you're going to go the next day. The thing that I've done that works quite nicely is that you can get all the information from the students, you can work out who's done what question right, who's done what question wrong, um, and then you can pair the students up who got it right with someone who didn't quite get it right, and then they can teach each other. So the student who then explains it is learning more about it, and the student who's, who is getting the extra tutoring from your student um, is also getting the experience of learning it and getting it probably kind of explained to them in a different way. So it's a really nice way of being able to um, collect data, see where your class is, and then personalise your next day's teaching.